Hello friends, welcome to my channel Nehira Techies and this is our Angular 16 NGRX tutorial part 3 video. So in this part 1, I have provided the introduction regarding this NGRX. There I have said in this NGRX we are using this Redux pattern only. So in this Redux pattern have three important sections that is state, actions and reduces. So in this video, I am going to provide some overview and also plan to share some code snippet so that will help you to understand the concept also it is very helpful while implementing ngrx concept in our application so first we can start from state the state is nothing but a json object it can have the application data and also it can hold any data type it could be string boolean array or object okay so now let me show you one sample state so this is the code snippet you can see so in this state i am having four properties okay the data types are boolean the next one is array then object and also the string so in this real time concept for loading one listing screen i am using this state okay the first two properties loading so it is responsible for showing the spinner and the next one is user list after completing our api request so in this positive response, I will get the list of user information and similarly for the user object, it is responsible for loading the individual user information and the final one is error message. If there is any error on our API call, so we have to show the error message. So that detail will be stored in our error message. Okay, this is one of the basic state. And one more thing, so in this state value, we can modify at the same time, we cannot change the structure of this state. So that means, so currently I'm having this state. So instead of this true, I can change this into false. And also if this is the empty array. I can include a lot of values. Okay. At the same time, if I'm planning to remove this user object, it is not possible. So that's what I'm trying to convey. And the next thing is, what are the information we cannot store in our state? So the first one is unshared data. So since this NGRX concept is used for the state management, that means transferring data between the different components. So in some cases, I'm having some variable that is in our component, okay? So it can have some data. I'm not going to share with the different components. So in this case, there is no use of having this NGRX. So that's what I'm saying. If there is any unshared data, then don't have it in our state, okay? And the next one is form data and also the router data. Because the router data is somewhat complex, then don't keep in our state, okay? So next, let me move on the actions. So in these actions, we have two sections. One is actions and another one is the action creators. So first, we can start from actions. So in our component, any event is performed the action is dispatched from our action creators okay so basically it is kind of functions it is having one default to properties type so the type property is used for identifying it's going to perform what actions okay and the next thing is action name should be unique and also we can pass the data through these actions using these payload options now let me show you one of the sample actions so see now this make request is one of the action it is having the type the type is make request and it's don't have any data transfer okay and the second one is failure request the type is fail request and it is having some data transfer using this payload option we are transferring this error message okay and the third one is get user list here the type is get user list and we are passing the user list information as the array through this payload option we are passing the array also similarly we have this delete user and add user also so the, our final conclusion is if any event is happened in our application we are dispatching one of the action method like a page load or a button click so in this credit actions like a add create update and delete similarly for the all the events we are dispatching one of the action so we have to create the separate actions with a unique name okay and the next thing is action creators so before going to this action creators let me provide some information regarding this reducer so then only you will get some better understanding 
So the reducers are pure functions. It is having two parameters. One is action and another one is state information. So basically this reducer will calculate or else finalize the data based on our action and the state. That value should be updated in our store and it should be consumed in different components. Okay. Now let me show you some sample reducers. See. So this is one of the reducer. It's taking two inputs. The first one is state and another one is the action. And see. The first one is make request okay so already i am having one state okay so in this state i am going to modify this loading only other values should be as it is so that's what i'm just returning this state after that i am modifying this true so similarly in this failure request you can see i'm just returning this state i have to change two properties one is our loading and another one is the error message and finally in this get user list I am changing all the properties so that's what I'm not returned to this state so I have provided the value for all the properties loading is false the error message is empty and the user list is whatever data I am getting from the payload I'm just added and the final one is the user object okay so now let me go to the action creators so here you will understand the complete flow okay so just to consider one component in this page load function I have to load the list of users that should be displayed in my grid okay so the function name is fetch user list this is nothing but an our action creator okay so in this action creators I am able to dispatch our actions first I am dispatching this make request now let me go back to our make request action so this is our make request action here the type is make request now it is coming to our reducer side so here I am checking the cases make request here I am returning the existing state information and also I am setting the loading is true so that means our spinner is loading the initial time so that means our spinner is loading in this initial time okay now let me go back to our action creators and the next thing is here I am calling our API so actually this snippet I am taken from the react application that should I have included like this this API call so in our angular it is somewhat different so anyway the concept is same only so in this API call I am having two response one is positive response and the second one is exception so in this positive response I am dispatching this get user list and also passing the user list information this is the array now let me go back to our action see here in this get user list I have this data so that data I have to include it in this payload and our type is get user list now let me go back to our reducer side so in this get user list action I am just marking this loading is false and there is no error so let me mark this error message is empty and in this user list whatever data I am getting from the API response I am adding this into our user list and similarly this user object also empty okay. this is all about the fast view response workflow and similarly I am able to get the exception also if there is any error I am just dispatching this fail request okay now let me check this fail request action so in this fail request I have the type is fail request and the payload I'm passing the error message okay now let me go back to our reducer side so here in this fail request I have to return the existing state and I have to stop the spinner so that's what I make this loading as the false and in this error message so whatever data I'm getting I'm just added here so once I'm having this error message so that actually I can display in our application base and if I'm getting the positive response like a list of user information that I supposed to populate in our grid okay so this is all about overall concept once you are familiar with these three concept it is very easy to implement the coding side so in my next video onwards we are starting the coding implementation so now we are in the end of the video still if you have any doubts or clarification please post in the comment box and also please don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you thanks for watching